good field position. And the sparse crowd begins to try to make some noise. Third and ten, Charles White. And he's got the first down. Interesting call, but it worked pretty well. Newberry and Doug Smith opened the hole. White made a nice cut. Really keeping him off balance with this type. I, I question the call, but you can't question it when he gains 10 yards in a first down. But a draw with 10 yards to go, you don't really think of. Off balance, they caught him in a situation where they thought they were going to throw the ball. Charlie White pops up in there for the first down. And not just Newberry and Doug Smith, but a heck of a trap blocked by Irv Hanke. White again. He was down before he lost the football. Noga made the stop. And Charles White, who had over 100 yards in the first half, is now pressing down on a 200-yard day. Great day for Charles White. 28 carries, 187 yards. Interior of this offensive line, we talked about it. It's an older, experienced offensive line, all double-digit guys, 10, 11, 12 years old. They're knocking them out of there, controlling the ball on the ground, which takes an awful lot of pressure off of Jim Everett. He hasn't had to throw the ball to get it done. His offensive line and backs are doing it for him. Just like that. And that time the give up inside was to Gooman. And Gooman got a good block from Doug Smith, the center, and he's close to a first down. Look at this work in the interior, Jim. Dennis, Dennis Harris not in there, Duval Love, Doug Smith, Tom Newberry, the entire center of the line pushing the red shirt straight back. If they can continue to do that, then they'll march it down in there. Just straight drive blocking. Coaches love to see that kind of football. Nothing fancy, just here we come. First down it was. Ball is just across midfield. This is an impressive Ram drive. White. Six more yards. Yeah. Down to the 43. Well, the home folks are starting to get a little upset with this drive. They're starting to, the boo birds are coming out. But it's the same thing we talked about. It's nothing fancy. It's just man on man. You see the offensive line there? They just set back like it's going to be a pass. It's a quick little draw type thing. They set back and then take them on. And look at which direction the red shirts are going. They're all going backwards. Gooman helping the offensive line with some yeoman work of his own out of the fullback slot. Second down and three. White again. What is this, the Rose Bowl? He's down to the 36-yard <laughs> line. Everything they do, they're doing well. They run the ball inside, they pitch sweep outside, they hook the defensive end, block the linebackers. Everything they're doing is working well on the ground. And here are the numbers on White now. He needs one more yard to reach the 200-yard mark. There are many in Los Angeles who will look at those figures and say, well, Dickerson would have had 300 yards. <laughs> there are others who will say, Eric Thu, well, another thing that happens in the offense like this is not only is White doing it, but the outside receivers have done well. The tight ends have caught the ball. They spread the ball around. I think this offense can be very, very effective with the personnel that they have. And make it 200 for Charles White. The biggest day of Charles White's career in his eighth year out of the University of Southern California. And it wasn't all that long ago, just two months ago, in fact, when many questioned whether he would ever play again in the National Football League. Real credit to his determination, though. He is a very, very tough guy, mentally and physically. Well, he's going to have to be. Everett. Trying to get it to Gooman and Leonard Smith came very close to making a big play. He Almost a nice play, nice touch on the ball. What they're trying to do is they're trying to get Gooman on a linebacker. Nico Noga happens to be running with him. You see Noga the left of your screen going after him. Leonard Smith coming over to help him out. He's got Noga beat. Leonard Smith comes over and saves the play. So now it will be third down and nine yards to go. Here's where the Cardinals need their pressure, Jim, right here. They've got to stop him. Here's where the Rams need to come up with something creative. Three wide receivers. Good throw. Yep. And Ellard is past the chain. It will be a Ram first down at the 25-yard line. Well, Jim Everett's making the plays that he needs to make. You see the receivers out here? They've got a, a zone-type coverage. You see they just sit down in the zones. 
Ellard, smart enough to know where the chains are, stops just in time for the first round. The ball is delivered where it should be, low and outside. And the Rams, Kenny, have kept the football for nearly eight minutes in this drive. They got it with 11.01 to go. White again, arms wrapped around the ball. Gets it down near the 20 and about White the 21. Davis and Smith made the tackle. And there's another difference between White and Dickerson. This is not to suggest that Eric would have fumbled today, but Charles hasn't. Protecting the ball down in here especially. Another thing that Jim Everett has to remember too is a field goal wins the game for him late like this. You don't want to throw the interception. You don't want to take a sack, which would knock you back into a deeper field goal attempt. Gooman. Good yardage on the counter up inside, and he's down to the 15-yard line. If Jim Everett's smart right here, what he will do would be take his time and let this 39, 38 seconds run off the clock, come over with the two-minute warning, and get the play that you want. They need about six inches now for another first down. And now Everett takes a timeout. I think it was a St. Louis timeout, Jim. Yeah, you're right. It was the Cardinals who called the timeout. So the Cardinals begin stopping the clock in anticipation of a Ram score, which will snap this time. And as Gene Stallings talks to his two safety men, Young and Smith, we'll be back. The kind of drive that Super Bowl contenders are able to make. The kind of team the Rams were once thought to be. They took the football at their two-yard line with 11.01 remaining in a tie game in a driving rain and with Charles White carrying it 10 times, the Rams have held it for 17 plays, 81 yards, 8 minutes and 29 seconds. Now they need to convert a third and short at the 15-yard line of the Cardinals to keep alive a scoring opportunity, which would snap the tie. The six foot five inch, 212 pound second year quarterback, Jim Everett, has the first down. The clock runs toward the two minute warning. And the Cardinals do not elect to stop it. I think, they, think what you're thinking here, Jim, is to save as many timeouts as you possibly can in the event, in the advent that they do score to give Neil Lomax as much time as possible because he is dynamite at bringing this team back. And a, and a timeouts are awfully important to a quarterback in the last two minutes of football game. But if they aren't able to come all the way back, and that's a decision which may come back to haunt them as they gave away 21 seconds there. We'll be back. Pretty good day for Ducks in St. Louis, and with two minutes to go, John Robinson, a former University of Oregon end, is going to see if it can be a good day for him as well. On first down, Charles White gets the call and hammers down close to the 10-yard line. The Rams are trying to complete a 98-yard drive from the shadow of their own goalpost in the rain, and White has just carried the ball for the 11th time on the drive. As you can see, he is the first Ram, other than Eric Dickerson, to rush for more than 200 yards in a game in the past 16 years. The Cardinals have just used their second time out, so they will have one remaining now. The key for St. Louis, they must stop the Ram thrust here, force a field goal attempt, hopefully block it or make it miss, and then have Lomax come back and do something for them. And Lomax work his magic. He's been doing it uh, the last three or four weeks, but he needs the football to do it. There is the man who may yet decide the game for the Rams, kicker Mike Lansford. It's been a real clutch kicker for them. Good field goal percentage, good pressure kicker. Came into today's play, ranked second, second in the Lansford. NFC in scoring with 44 points. Lansford crossed the picket line during the strike and got a chance to kick then. White again. Fumble! 
and he gets it back at the five. He was crucial.